everyone, Aaron here from Rudy Visuals. Hope you're all doing well and keeping safe. In today's video, we're doing a quick review of the Desview R72. And as you can see, it's one of the biggest and also one of the brightest monitors that I've ever used here on this channel. And spoiler alert, it's pretty awesome. Before we kick on with this review, a big thank you to Desview for sending this monitor to us for review. This is not a paid or sponsored review. And as always, all thoughts and opinions are fully independent. Now I've reviewed monitors at every price point from less than $99 to over $500. And I've always thought that around 250, 300 is kind of that sweet spot between giving most filmmakers most of the things and features that you'd need, but not being overly expensive and giving you the best bang for your buck. Now the original R7P has been my go-to monitor for YouTube and work and so, and this R7 II is essentially an upgraded version and has an MSRP of around $269, so it fits right into that sweet spot I mentioned earlier. Now the most important thing of course is going to be, you know, that screen. And right off the bat, this is an error that I will say definitely doesn't disappoint. This is a seven inch, Full HD 1920 by 1080 resolution screen with a 178 degree viewing angle. The image is incredibly clear, really vibrant and color accurate. Sometimes with the cheaper monitors, you feel that like the screens aren't really that much of an upgrade over the one on your camera. They're just a little bit bigger, but this one is very clearly a huge big upgrade. So it's a great option for filmmakers who need to ensure that their framing, their focusing, exposure, etc., are perfect. The really big selling point here, of course, is the size, that big seven inch screen. And of course, the peak brightness of 2600 nits, which means this thing gets pretty bright. Even on a sunny day, this should be very visible, even without a sun hood. Unfortunately, I do live in the UK. It's the middle of January, so I can't really test this out fully, but you can see here that it does get very bright. I had no issues with filming this outside in the daytime. It was very clear and visible. It's also a full touch screen, which is nice and responsive. You can swipe up and down to adjust the brightness, for example, and also to adjust the volume and going through the menus and all that is very easy. It also helps that the UI and all the features are grouped together logically and display and system settings too. It just feels like it was designed to be as easy to use as possible straight out of the box. Speaking of the box, you also get a few other goodies in the box. Here is everything you get in the box, which includes a D-Tap DC power cable, a couple of HDMI cables, a camera mount and some accessories for it, a USB for transferring LUTs and for firmware updates, and a carry bag, cleaning cloth and manual that do yourself a favor and get a better horseshoe mount. The included one doesn't really feel all that solid to me. As you'd expect, it comes with pretty much all of the professional tools you might need for capturing a video, such as false colors, zebras, you've got histograms, various waveforms, vector scopes, HDR, focus peaking, grid lines, audio meters, and more. One tool that I always use is the focus peaking, which lets you see which parts of your footage are in focus. And also the zebras are very handy to make sure that your exposure is perfect. Moving on to the design and the build quality. So most of the device's real estate, as you can see, is taken up by the screen. There are some thick-ish bezels around the monitor, as you can see. There's also a HDMI in and out, a few shortcut buttons on the top, which you can configure, the power switch. There's a couple of mounting holes and your battery compartment at the back, as well as a headphone jack and USB at the bottom. You can use Sony F batteries, such as the F970, F550. With these cheap F550 batteries that I have lying around, we can get about a couple of hours use, which is not so spectacular, but it's not terrible either. So for longer shoots, if you are going on longer shoots, you might have to carry a few batteries with you or use the DTAP power option. In terms of the build quality, this is probably the only area where I have some slight concerns. So for $269 around this price point, a lot of these monitors, they just, they do feel the same. They're all kind of the same plastic. You know, fairly rugged, robust. The screen on this one is supposedly like scratch resistant. However, if the unfortunate happens and you do drop this on a hard surface or it fall, falls off your camera because you forgot to tighten the mount or something like that, then these monitors probably won't survive. They will crack, the housing will crack. I have actually damaged quite a few Desview monitors in the past, a Marvo P5 and an R6 UHB, both of which 
you know, feel all, not all that different in build quality. I'm not saying the build quality is bad, it's perfectly functional, it's decent if you take care of it, you know, keep it in your travel bag, make sure everything is nice and secure when shooting, then going great, it should last you, but just don't expect it to survive any harsh treatment, basically. The only other minor issue is that it is quite a big monitor, obviously. So, you know, in terms of kind of being like a portable setup, I don't know if you would really call this a portable lightweight setup it's not really a, f a five inch monitor might be better for you in that case but if you are filming indoors or you do need that bigger real estate then yeah probably not a problem for you then so all in all the desvi r72 is a really really good solid monitor i know i love the huge size of it personally the screen is very sharp and clear all the tools you get included are super useful so if you are a filmmaker and you need a screen then this is definitely going to tick a lot of boxes for you i just wish that the overall build quality was a little bit better you know going from like a 99 to a 150 to 200 300 dollar monitor they don't really feel like you're getting that much better build quality to be honest apart from the better screens and stuff but overall for its intended use case it's an awesome monitor it does exactly what it says on the tin very easy to use, very simple. So it gets a really visual seal of approval. If you're interested in picking one of these up for yourself, there will be links in the description box below. Any questions, feel free to ask and leave them down there in the comment section. If you found this video, then hit that like button, subscribe to see more, and you can also follow us on the socials. And as always, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching, peace.